Okay, in this video, what we're gonna do is gonna talk about the Unit 2 Quiz 1 review. So the first thing is a Venn diagram. It says, in a school of 450 students, 120 students are in DECA, 270 play sports, and 75 participate in both. So we wanna create a Venn diagram for the situation above. So we've got two categories here. We've got DECA, sports, and then both in the center. Um, it tells us that there are 450 students. So I'm going to write that at the top here. And then it says that there are 120 students that are in DECA, uh, 270 that play sports, and 75 students in both. So the very center here is going to be 75. Now, in this DECA circle, the entire circle right here, I'm going to do this. In this entire DECA circle, there should be 120 students. So if I already have 75 in the center, then that means what goes over here will be 120 minus the 75. So we've got 120 minus 75, and that should give us 45. So there are 45 students that are in DECA only. And the same thing works for the sports. If we have 270 players or 270 students that play sports and 75 of them are in the center, then that means 70, 270 minus 75 will give us the ones that just play sports. So over here will be 195. Now, it says how many students are involved in either DECA or sports? Um, well, either or means the combination of both circles. So we're gonna have all the students that are in just DECA, all the students that are in both, and all the students that are in just sports. So we've got uh, 45 plus 75 plus 95, and that's gonna equal 315. So there's 315 students in both circles combined. And then part C says, how many students do not participate in any activities? So that's all the students that are going to be out here in the uh, square box, but not in the circle. So to find that, we're going to have the total, 450, and then we're just going to take away all the students that are inside the circles. So we've got 450 minus 315, which equals 135 students. So there's going to be 135 out here. Part D says, how many students are not in DECA? Well, we've got... 120 students that are in DECA and we have 450 total so 450 minus 120 is going to equal 330. Uh, question 2 says uh, what the pho offers the following menu and so we've got buns, cheeses, and toppings and it says create the tree diagram for this situation. So before I do the tree diagram, what I want to do is I just want to look at the probability of each of these items. So for buns, since I have only two buns, then that means you have a one in two chance of getting either of the buns. For cheeses, you got three, so we got a one in three chance. And then toppings, we also have three, so we got a one in three chance. Um, now for the tree diagram, we've got first thing up is our buns, right? So I'm going to have, since I've got two buns, I'm going to have two branches. So I'm going to have wheat and sesame. And then for the cheeses, I've got three of them. So each one of these are going to have three branches. And they're going to be American, Provolone, and Colby Jack. American, all right, and then we've got toppings, so we got three of those, so each of the cheese options will have three branches. So I'm going to have one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
And so we're gonna have lettuce, tomato, and special sauce for each of these. All right, and now it says, what is the probability you will get a wheat bun with American, Colby Jack, or provolone cheese and either tomato or special sauce? So we've got a wheat bun, so we're restricted to just a wheat bun. So out of the two options, we only have one out of the two. Then for the cheeses, we've got American, Colby Jack, or provolone, so it doesn't specify. So we've got three out of three choices. And then the last one, we've got tomato or special sauce. So we can have two out of the three toppings. So in total, we've got one times three times two on top, which will give us six. And on the bottom, we've got one time, or two times three times three, which equals 18. So we've got six out of 18, or a one in three chance, or a 33.3% chance. So we've got about a one in three chance of getting a sandwich like that. Uh, part C says, what's the probability you will get either lettuce or tomato? So um, if you're looking at lettuce or tomato, you need to look at all sandwiches that have a lettuce, out of toma a lettuce or tomato on them. Um, so if we look at that, we're going to have, if we count up all the sandwiches in this uh, graph, in this tree diagram, we're gonna see that there are 12 out of 18 total sandwiches that have either lettuce or tomato on them. So we got 12 out of 18, or two out of three, uh, which is a 66.7% chance. And then the last one, what is the probability you will get American cheese? So we have to look at American cheese. We have two out of two bread options they never specified for cheeses though they said we have to have american cheese and then for the toppings they didn't specify so it'll be three out of three so two times one times three is six over 18 which is one third or 33.3 percent next one we're gonna be looking at a tree diagram again this one's a maze and we have to figure out, find the probability for each path. So there are two options here. Some of the paths lead to AirPods, some of them lead to a bag of unicorn farts. So we're gonna be starting here, okay? And at the very beginning, we've got three paths to choose from. So each of these paths have a one in three chance of being taken. Uh, path one doesn't have any other paths to it, so it's just straight on. The middle one, though, splits, and so we've got path two and three here. And since there's two paths, or two forks right here, then we have a one in two chance for each of, the, uh, each of these paths here. And the same goes for this one. We've got a veer right here, so there's only two forks, so we've got one and two, one and two. Um, Oops. So I'm going to look at these as paths one, two, three, four, and five. So path one. Path one has a one in three chance, and it leads to unicorn farts. So I'm going to label it U, F. All right. The next one is path two. It has a one in three times one in two chance. One in three times one in two. And that equals a one in six chance and it leads to unicorn farts again. Path three is a is the same as path two, right? It's got a one in three times one in two chance. Which equals one sixth, which leads to unicorn farts. Or excuse me, it leads to AirPods. Uh, path four is uh, one in three times one and two, that equals one and six, and that one leads to AirPods too. Uh, and then path number five, it is one and three again times one and two. So we've got one and three times one and two equals one and six, and that one leads to unicorn farts.
okay? So now that we've got all the paths figured out, we can ask, what is the probability that you will end up with the AirPods? Well, what we wanna do is we just wanna add up all the probabilities that we find AirPods for. So this one and this one. So we've got one sixth plus one sixth, which equals two sixths, which is the same as one third or 33.3%. Uh, and then question C, it says, if 60 people go through the maze, how many should get their very own bag of unicorn farts? So first thing we want to do is look at the probability of getting unicorn farts, right? So we've got uh, path one, path two, and path five. So I need to add up all of these probabilities. So I got one third plus one sixth plus one sixth. So I'm gonna have two thirds or 66.7%. So 66.7% of all uh, people going through the maze should reach the unicorn farts, okay? And since you have uh, 60 people going through, well then it should be 66.7% of those 60 people, okay? So I'm just gonna use two thirds because that one's easier to use here. Um, so I'm going to say two-thirds of the 60 people should reach the unicorn farts. And if you multiply two-thirds times 60, you should get 40 people. So of the 60 people, 40 of them will reach unicorn farts, and then the other 20 will reach the AirPods.